get into some football. Um, so this speech is all, or this talk is going to be all about uh, running your quarterback. Here's just a couple reasons why. A dual threat, a running quarterback adds a dimension to the offense by being a dual threat. Defenses have to respect both their passing and running abilities, and it's make, it makes it harder to defend, clearly. Um, that's, that's why you want a, a quarterback that can run. Just having a threat of a pass, even if it's a bubble pass, is enough to hold kids that hold uh, defenses back. Um, we don't pass a ton at the youth, but oh, uh, actually, I'll be honest with you, two years ago, we passed about 25% of the time. Uh, which for me and in this area and everything like that, that's a pretty big number for a youth team. And we had quite a bit of success with it. Um, some short passes, some, some longer passes. But like I said, for all in all, most of it was uh, all based on play action. Um, so play, play action effectiveness. So two years ago when we passed a ton, I had a kid that could sit in the pocket. He was a little bit taller, had a big arm. It could make some of those throws. Um, this year, I didn't have that. Um, the kid that I had this year was a little bit shorter, but he was faster. He was more athletic. So everything for him was a rollout. It was still play action because we talked. So the rules we had for him was you are running the throw. So you are running jet. And if somebody's open, then you can throw your pass. If you're running jet and there's all dropping in coverage, you're talking about unless we need a big play. Like if it's third or fourth and 10 plus, all right, you're probably going to want to take that shot. If it's second and eight and you're rolling out and you can get us five, Great. Take those five all day long. Uh, so again, we taught him more to, he's, he's running jet. And if the passes are cool, if not, you're running jet. Um, extending plays kind of along the same lines. If he drops back again, this goes more of a rollout, but uh, the kid, the year we had a drop back passer, he still ran the ball. He was still a super talented running back. He just wasn't as fast. He was more of a, I don't want to say a bruiser, but he was a little bit bigger than the kid we had this last year. So he was able to kind of get out of the pocket and make some plays. And again, he had a monster arm. Uh, broken plays. If you coach youth more than hell, 10 minutes, you've probably had a broken play at some, in, in those 10 minutes, um, especially out of the gun. If you don't have a center, that's super reliable. Uh, two years ago, I had a center that was, I think he made missed two practices or missed two snaps all season long. Uh, this last year, I think I went through six different centers. Um, so you've got to have a quarterback that can make a play when plays break down. Um, so again, it doesn't need to be anything big, but just keeps you from those, those negative plays. And the biggest reason for me running the, uh, uh, running the quarterback is it adds an extra blocker in a lot of different sets. Now you can, you run power. And if you've been in my last two, you've kind of seen it. Now you're adding an extra guy to a set that might already be heavy to that side. Maybe we're in our Brown look, which is a tight bunch to our strong side. Now you're adding another blocker going through that hole. So you want to almost end up with three guys in a gap and a half just leading through. It's almost like a wedge on the outside with your quarterback going behind it. So again, um, that to me, it says right here, like I said, uh, find the plus one or be, better yet, create it. Um, you might be even with your running back getting the ball and you might gain, you might be a plus one if the quarterback's keeping it because now your running back is blocking. So again, I mean, the name of the game for an offensive coordinator is find that plus one. Where can you attack that defense out of this look? And again, a lot of times you can kind of create that plus one by running your quarterback. Our quarterback can run every concept in our offense. Uh, jet power, buck, counter, belly, Trojan. Our running back, or our quarterback who, yeah. uh, can run every one of these concepts out of just about every formation. Uh, it, there'll be certain uh, tweaks and everything like that to it. But for the most part, the blocking rules are all going to be the same. So your front, uh, your front five are going to be your front – Six, even if you count your uh, your tight end and everything, are going to be all going to be the same. So again, it's it's very easy to install the install running uh, place for your quarterback to run. You don't need to recreate the wheel with it. You're you're already got your blocking schemes in, and it don't matter for anybody other than the quarterback and your F who's running it out of those two. Because because for the other nine guys, it's the same exact play, and you'll see that kind of when we get through these this film. Like I said, this one's going to be. Uh, rapid fire film. I've got uh, so five concepts. I don't have any Q Buck uh, film. We just haven't run Buck. And if you've been in my last couple of presentations, uh, you, you've seen why it just it, it turns into a tough, tough block off, off tackle if you don't get that push up front. Um, we've had success running it in the past, but I, I've I became a bigger fan of Trojan. So again, red Q power, pretty simple stuff. Most of what I've got drawn up is going to be out of a. Uh, uh, against the 40 front, because that's what we see, whether it's a uh, 4-4, four, 4-2-5, four, four, kind of same thing. Um, so with this, this is uh, red, which is just tight end wing right. 
uh, with our F leading up through the hole. So now, I mean, look, you got your guard pull wrap it right up through the hole. You got your F leading through the hole. Then you got your B inserting through the hole. If you get a good block here and a good kick out there, this hole is enormous. And this kid, I mean, he might fly in, but again, he's going to got to get through some traffic. And then these two guys here, our guard is looking to the inside. So our guard's looking to pick this guy up and our F is looking for anybody coming through. Um, then same with our B, just kind of first guy through, which really clears that out. And I'll take my running back against the free safety all day long. So this is a look here. Some of this film might be replayed from earlier. Uh, so this is just red Q buck. This is out of our base look. Uh, this was the quarterback from two years ago that could, uh, was more of a passer. But again, as you can see, he's a, he's definitely a talented runner. He's not a uh, super shifty, but he had a killer stiff arm and it was, or it wasn't super fast, but he was kind of shifty in a hole and had a pretty killer stiff arm on the edge. So like I said, he definitely had a hell of a season running the ball with us as well. And again, we passed 25, uh, 25% of the time. And I don't know what our completion percentage was, but I'm sure it was over 50, 60%. So with this, again, you can see, uh, this is our guard here. He pulled wraps. You got your B here. Who's inserting there. Really? Uh, sorry about that, guys. All right, let me just reset that. There we go. All right. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure that everyone can see the the screen still. Uh, all right. Can everybody see the uh the PowerPoint? Looks like on my end we can, so we should be good to go. All right, so again, you got your pull on guard here, your F lead blocking, your B getting in there, and then again, your quarterback just finding that that seam and going. And does a solid 10 yard play on first and 10, so take that all day long. All right. This view isn't the best just because it's coming from behind the defense, but you get a pretty good view of. Uh, like I said, our backside guard pull wrapping. And something I do want to kind of stress with this that I should have stressed with our quarterback more is take his time getting the hole. I know down near the goal line, we definitely we don't want him to necessarily take his time. We just want him to hit it fast. But you can see here, he actually beats our F and our guard to the hole. Like I said, we get a, we get a good push up front. Our strong tackles kind of actually this, our strong tackle here. We missed him for half the season this year. He was a 10 year old for me last year. I mean, he just crashed down and we got a good kick out. There was nobody there, a little bit of flow, but nothing that was going to make a bit of difference. Get back under the way. All right. So here we go. Uh, same thing. I know some of it's going to be a little redundant from the last one, but it does change up a little bit. So again, we're in our Mustang X look. So X just brings our A and our X over to the strong side, which keeps our cornerback out and it'll pull this outside linebacker out somewhat. Um, I do typically like these guys to be a little bit wider than I've got drawn up here, uh, which will pull this guy out a little bit more. A lot of times you might see them apex or split the difference between the, the tight end and the A. Um, if you've got a kid that you can catch and a quarterback that you trust to throw it, bubble could be open all day long out to the strong side. Um, and that will keep this kid honest. Um, other than that, again, you got your block out here. You got your pull wrap on your backside. And now you got your B leading up through here. So the only difference is the B's in, our, in your backfield. That's the Mustang part of the tag. So Mustang tells your B to come into the backfield. And he's just leading up through the hole from the backfield. So we run like a follow concept here. So the quarterback takes the hand up to the F. And then he leads up and through. Our B's, B's leading up and through. Our quick guard's leading through. And then you got your quarterback that just gets behind the cavalry and just goes. 
again, you're playing a numbers game. You've got one, two, three, four, five blockers on this side against one, two, three, four, maybe, if you want to count this guy. I mean, this guy might be over the nose. He might creep this way a little bit, but either way, you still got numbers to where you should be able to get, get a positive gain here. Get a good, solid double team on this tackle, and you're off to the races. So again, this is our ref. He's coming across, and the quarterback's just going to get behind him. Watch the quarterback. I think this is the play. He, he almost – I think he's got his hand, like, on his back, close to it. Like, see how close he was to the to the F coming through that hole? Like, that's how close you want him. Like, you want him right there. So, he makes that block, and that quarterback is off that block in a half a second. Um, like I said, and it's it wasn't a big block. Like, that block by our F wasn't a monster kill shot. It was just enough to seal him, and our quarterback was a half yard behind him, and boom, gone. And it turns into a big play for us. I think we get a solid down block here. Uh, I think he might have tackled him, but that was the one time the ref didn't flag us that game. We got a lot of flags for holding that game, unfortunately. But, again, just by moving that extra guy out of the backfield, or moving the uh, that guy into the backfield and then moving your X and your A out, it opens up that off tackle just that much more. All right. So this is just a hair fancier, I guess you'll say, because we've got two tags and a motion with it. So what this is going to do, we, I got a question earlier in the last presentation about how do you deal with a inside linebacker that pretty much lined up in the C gap. And, I mean, power is power. Everybody loves power. At least I, I think everybody should love power, if not. Um, so like, I want to be able to run off tackle. I just want to be tougher than you and just pound it right here. And honestly, if you're a wing T guy, that is kind of your mindset, even if it is somewhat spread, like, uh, like we're running here, it's your mindset. Typically is still, I want to pound the rock. Um, if not, you're probably going spread air raid, something like that. Um, so like I said, the deal with this dude here, we bring our F in motion and we fake jet. So he's making the ride and I'll throw it here on film in a second. You fake that jet this kid is going to take that half a step out to come out to this guy to adjust for the, uh, the jet. If not, we're going to hand it. I mean, we're not making a read. That's going to be a coach's call. Like if we see that this kid is just sitting and he's just still shutting us down off tackle here, we're going to hand it. Now we got numbers out there because now he's going to reach, he's going to crack down. We're going to have numbers. We're going to make a play. So this is red flop, empty Frida, which is motion is uh, F motion. Cause that's our F that's our empty. He makes that there. You look out here, this is that inside linebacker. Watch him on the jet. He steps out. Number 20 is our B. So 20 gets inside of him here. He doesn't valley, but he still gets inside of him. Makes just enough of a block to keep him to that outside. He rides that, and we get up and underneath it. And that's a solid play. And again, it, it, all it took was just a simple motion, a very easy play to install. All these guys up front, so from this quick tackle over to our tight end and wing, it's all power. Nothing changes, whether it's Q power, F power, red flop, X, Z, Frida, Q power. It's all the same for those guys up front. Their blocking rules are all the same. So it makes it, it's a lot, again, plays, uh, formations are cheap. Concepts and plays are expensive. It takes a lot of time to install the new concepts and plays. So we'll run through this once more. Again, I got all five concepts. I don't have bucks, but like I said, I got five out of the six concepts. So we'll get through a bunch of those. Power, I've got the most film on. So like I said, as we go, there's less and less film of each one just because I haven't run it as much. Power has been my bread and butter for two years now. All right, so black is our bunch look. So black is tight left. So you got your B. So what how what uh, black's going to do is you got your bunch left tight. So Y is somewhat flexed. Again, depending on the play call, I probably want him a little bit wider if this end is going to stay outside of him or head up to him. Um, if he stays in that spot as the Y steps out and now he's sitting in that gap, he's got to tighten back down to be able to get to that block. But again, uh, we teach smart splits and our, our kids love it. They think it's the coolest thing when they can line up three feet from the, uh, the strong tackle. And if that DM, especially at the youth level, what's he taught? Stay outside shoulder, play contain. So if he, he goes out, to, out here three yards, two, well, two, three yards, now that hole in the middle or off tackle is huge. And that makes that block even easier. And, again, that kid thinks it's the coolest thing that he's three yards from the tackle where he's usually a yard and a half from him. Our B is just leading up through the hole, and our A is just kind of kicking anything out from the outside. Um, Kenny makes a good point. Usually your A is your smaller guy, so you don't want your small guys blocking big guys. So you keep him on the outside and he'll block out. 
Uh, usually it's an outside backer, maybe a corner, depending on their luck. Um, then lead him through. Again, F leading up and through. Quarterback takes his step out and then gets up and through. You got your guard pulling. So, again, you got a lot of bodies going up through the hole. And, that you're, you're again, it's a numbers game. A lot of teams at the youth level will not adjust to different formations. And a lot of coaches don't scout. I mean, I, I like I, we scout a lot. Like, well, we record like we record all of our games and we try to get other teams games too, if we can. Um, I've got some, hell I paid a high school kid 40 bucks one time to drive 45 minutes to record a game. Um, so like I said, I kind of have a pretty decent idea of what formations we're going to see coming in, but there's a lot of coaches that don't. So if you come in and you're running eight formations, they're not going to line up right to half of them. So you come out your first drive, you run a handful of formations and they're just not going to be able to line up to it. And that's how you create your, your mismatches. And I went over that a bunch with the uh, formations, emotions in the last section, but it's pretty simple stuff at the youth level. So let's use a black Q power. Um, I like this play mainly. I mean, it was blocked pretty well, but like watch my two running backs here. So this is my, I mean, he's, he's my B in this. This is my A. Like, watch these two kids and the blocks they make on the edge. And right through the end of the play, they're still battling with their dudes. Like, he, he, they're wrestling with each other over here. This is my B that's got that guy kicked out. I mean, like this view right here, it, I love seeing that. Right here, you got those two guys cleared that hole right out of there. You got your F leading up and through. And watch again, watch how close the quarterback is to my F coming through the hole. And he just makes that one cut and he's gone. Not gone, but he, it's a big play. Boom, one cut. Right there, right off that box. Huge play. That's fourth and one. We end up going in, going in and scoring on this drive. We get the lead. Uh, we got we went up eight nothing after this drive, and, and this was the championship game this last year. Uh, another look at Black Q Power. Again, same thing. I got a couple views here. Um, so with this, like. I think it was my first talk. I said, I want this kid, like, if your X is, again, this is a, a spot where you can kind of hide a kid. If if you got a uh, corner that's willing to stay with him, I've told my kid to come as close to the sideline, close enough to where he can give me a high five. If this kid's going to come there, great. I'll play 10 on 10 in here because you know what? This kid's not a guy for us. Um, great kid. I love this kid. Super good kid. But he wasn't as huge. Like, you, you can see him. He's tiny. He's not, again, he, you, you can hide a kid out here. And again, big thing with this, big blocks up front, and watch how close our quarterback is to our F. Cool, my, our B kind of gets a little bit lost in the mix there. But again, if, if our guard can pick up that guy right here, I think it's either one of these two, it's good. He, he slips through, and he, he slows it up, but that's still a five-yard game. If I go back. I did. All right. So real quick, funny story with this one. This is the play that you're going to see with this. This is the uh, final game. We're trying to run out or final play of the championship game. We're trying to run out the clock. And uh, I just called Brown, uh, Brown Ox uh, Q power. Well, my quick tackle lined up incorrectly. He came out and was lining up on the strong side. So we ended up in our bear look, which is our unbalanced look. I didn't call it. I didn't realize it because we were on the, the right sideline. And I was so focused on what was going on back here. I didn't realize I only had my quick guard on the back side. But I want you guys to see how unbalanced the defense is. Like, they don't adjust. Like, I've got literally one guy to the left of the center, and I think they have three or four guys to the, to the left of the center. Like, look how un – like, there's that's my guard. They've got one, two, three, four guys to the left of the center. And I think that, that, I think that guy's head up the center. So they got five guys on two over here. Then you got on the strong side, guard, tackle, tackle, end, split end, two running backs, and a third running back leading up through the hole. So like just based on numbers, if we're not ripping 10 yards a whack out of this play, we, sh we shouldn't even be out there. The, again, that, that play right there, we needed the first down to, uh, to seal the championship that we were able to need out after this. Um, but again, we ended up running that play back to back. Again, it was unbalanced. And I didn't realize it. The two plays before this, we we ripped off a first down, um, and the ref in the white hat threw a holding call on us. 
Um, I don't know. It was it was kind of wishy washy, but anyways. So it was second and I think close to twenty. We get we got back to here on second down, and then we ripped off this for and again it was the same play back to back. So again, unbalanced looks at the youth level are going to be your best friend. Unbalanced looks, different formations because they're just not going to line up to it. Any questions? Like I said, feel free to rip out any questions, guys. Um, I, I still have a couple other. Uh, I'm going to go through Trojan, Belly, Jet, and those might be the other ones. So Trojan here, the rules again on the outside, he blocks number one. It gets a little bit different when you've got uh, two guys split. That's why I want to take these guys and kind of spread them out. That way these guys are further outside so it doesn't confuse our B with blocking number one. Because technically, like, yeah, he's the number one threat that's not the corner, but he's far enough outside to where A should be able to pick him up. Um, our B is blocking number one, which is going to be that linebacker. Our Y has our the number two, which is the end. And, again, we tell our F on any place to the outside, look to this edge. Because if you don't pick – if we don't pick this edge up, because, again, this, this can be a tough block. If this guy's playing a little bit on the outside shade, that can be a tough reach block for him, especially if this guy's told to contain. his first, He's going to be outside, and his first step's going to be – outside even more so we tell her why on, on their way out of the backfield peek inside and make sure that ends contained if he is continue on if he's got any sort of leakage if it even looks like he might miss that block or he's struggling to hold it cut it up and help out um because again we got two guys pulling out there so we got numbers going to the edge either way so like i said secure that edge and then get to the outside like i said it's youth film so some of the film's great some of it's not the best angles, but it kind of gets the point. Um, I think this is early enough in the year to where our guard's pulling. We're only pulling one guard because we're already down one of our guards. So he, we get him out in space. And it turns into a pretty, pretty big play for us. And he's coming around the corner. He's not looking inside as much until there. I think he kind of hit that edge, and he's like, oh, shit, I think coach is going to yell at me if I don't look inside. And he does get his eyes to the inside just a little bit later. Like, I would like to see that hit upfield a little bit quicker. Like, I think right inside of, like, right here, that should be coming up. We should be getting upfield with that right there. But, again, still a good play. We got numbers out there. And that's what running your quarterback is going to do for you. All right, so we've gone uh, X, empty, strong. So this is just another unbalanced look, uh, just more with our backs. So we're in, we're in blue, which is tight end wing left. We went X, which brings our X over and our A over. And then we went empty, strong. So our empty tells our F to, get, to go to the quick side. Strong tells them to go to the strong side. So empty gets them out of the backfield. Strong gets them to the strong side of the formation. Um, we got guys over there. But again, big thing in youth sport or uh, youth football, work open field blocking. You're gonna see here how we've got, and you're gonna see it in a lot of uh, a lot of my plays where we're trying to block in in space. It doesn't look super pretty. Like we've got guys out here, and I don't think we block too many people. Like you can see, we just run by guys. Our guys are looking in the backfield. We get stopped. I know it wasn't a good play, but I just wanted to show you like the uh, different look you can get into and again with good, proper execution it, that's a big play there but really something I wanted to show you guys here is look at that D line where is that D end over here there's no D end over here we got our guard or tackler end and the furthest guy outside is right here and I think he's maybe maybe a two uh, head up the guard, maybe in the gap between the guard and the tackle. So, like, he's super tight. Like, my quarterback should have gotten that snap and just ran downhill. Like, look, keep his eyes up. See the space here. Um, yeah, I called uh, Trojan sweep. But, again, <laughs> look at that space there. Tuck it and go. All right, so we got Brown Q Trojan. We like Brown a lot. We've run that. We've run power out of it. And then what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing these guys come flying in. Like, especially when we're, we're having a lot of success here off tackle, these outside backers are going to come. 
Um, I've seen it where they brought this safety down into the box and just blew up off tackle here. Um, and then all we do is we hit it to the edge. They're coming, they're crashing inside, they're pinching. Our B hooks that outside linebacker. Our A gets outside him, becomes a lead blocker. We got two guards lead blocking, and then our quarterback can hit that edge. Again, we don't block this well at all. We block this very terribly. This was even worse than the last time. But just look at the numbers game we've got on this edge with, with running the quarterback. Again, you got our your B, your A, your Y, your uh, that your quarterback and your F is back there as well. But again, you watch this. It's it's almost sad how we don't block anybody. So it, it was actually after this game where we really put a lot of emphasis in the open field blocking. Because again, you can watch like these guys coming around. There's guys to be ta guys to be had, and they're just not picking anybody up. My tight end does a decent job here. My F runs right. He comes around this edge here, and he runs by three guys. He runs by him, and he kind of looks at him. There's a corner out here. So again, it's blocked terribly. But it just shows, like, we had numbers out there. There's nobody here. We get a good steel block here and everything, and it's, we're off to the races. But, I mean, even, even look right here. You've got – we got a good steal there, and if he can block him like he's supposed to, then we still have our, our guard lead blocking here, our F lead blocking here, and there's nobody out here. I think there's a corner sitting over here, but there's nobody out here if we're picking up our blocks. But we just miss all of our blocks, and, again, it doesn't go for much. I think we lost yards on it. But again, it just kind of shows that what's out there. All right. Belly is power to the quick side pretty much. Um, again, we run when we whenever we run belly, most of the time we're gonna run it with a motion because that's gonna put this kid in conflict, whether he's gonna come out with the uh with this kid here, and people they might shift over. But again, even with that, say they bump this backer out to help protect here. Sure, he's sitting in the apex sitting in the middle. Uh, they might slide this guy over behind the behind the guard, maybe, maybe not, which might slide these guys this way a little bit with the motion. But even with that, they bring if they want to start over committing this way for the motion, we still got guys this way. We can still run power going back to the strong side, especially if the backers are flowing this way, because we still got our guard pulling, and then we still got three linemen, and then we go Q power, we still got our F we can send this way. So again, there's answers to all those questions. Somebody was talking earlier about uh uh, like the if then concept, and uh, that's that's what it. Oh, Jesus, I went way back. Um, sorry about that. Trojan, Brown. So, like I said, it, the motion just messes with these linebackers because they have to step out with it. Because if they don't, we're gonna hit throw. We're gonna hit uh, jet. So, like I said, we, we're gonna run jet this way, and if this linebacker sits. We're handing that off all day long. If he flows out, flows out with the uh, the jet, we're going to just keep it and run inside. So it's kind of a you're in. Once you get to the high school level, you can read that player. At the youth level, the coaches kind of read it from the sidelines, where we're like, okay, we run we run that jet motion, and we say, okay, that linebacker is flowing out. Okay, we're going to have to call belly. Uh, as opposed to at the high school level, we can just say we're going to run jet read, and that's our call, and the quarterback makes to read on the fly. Um, I think. A youth quarterback, if you had the time to put into it, could run Jet Reed, but you'd have to be, you'd have to be committed to it. So here's the Jet. That kid steps out, and we cut it up underneath. Granted, the kid jet, jet back in. So like this kid follows the Jet, so he steps out, which leaves the gap here. Granted, the number twelve was kind of, was a dude for them, so he collapsed down on it really well, and we just bumped it outside of him. Just a good good read. Should have been an extra 15. I don't know why we didn't get it there, but we still won this game. This was our first, second round of the playoffs two years ago. But, again, he's leading up. They, we had a good down block here, good double team. So the hole was just a hair wider. Ran up there, and we just bounced it out. Big play. Uh. Red trip, so all that does is it takes your B and moves them out. So now you got uh, you got three wide out on the quick side. So now that linebacker's got to make that decision. Because uh, so it, the reason why I've got this drawn up against the sixty front is because this that's the look that we saw on uh, here. 
and I didn't, we haven't run trips a ton, but with this, it really worked because now, like, unless they're going to drag a D end out to cover this, they're going to have to pull their safety. They're going to have to pull their a linebacker out to cover those trips. Uh, unless they're going to get out of their six man front, which this team didn't. Um, but what this did, and we really torched this team on uh, Y pop. So we run belly. Look, there's nobody back you. So our Y just released downfield. And he'd get into space here, and he was open. I think he had, like, four catches that game, and they were all streaks down the field. Uh, I think he had one, one maybe two touchdowns on, on that. Uh, but, again, it's, it's all formation-based. We saw that they were in that six-man front, which pulled some guys here. They don't have enough to cover. The three out here have any sort of protection here. We get a decent block and kick here. There's nobody there. Granted, again, I don't think we blocked it well. I think our tackle was doing his own thing and our and this guy was doing his own thing because how it's supposed to work is he's the guy right behind the center or behind the ref is supposed to block down. And then our F coming out of the backfield is supposed to kick this guy. But then look, there's nobody there. There's absolutely nobody sitting there. We're in trips. They had, they brought their three guys out there. There's nobody in the deep middle. Again, we don't run it, we don't block it well, but our line our line didn't block it correctly. But that hole was there. So that's just more on execution and not not play call. So like I said, that that gap is is open. You get that that down block, down block, kick out there, you're off to the races. Number twelve was a tough kid, Bob. I'll take my number eight against his number twelve. And any questions so far? Except feel free to throw them into the chat. All right, so red and blue. So this is just odd. Yeah, same thing. We're so close to it. So the only that's that's the difference here. There we go. That's I'm looking at it. I don't have it drawn right. So this app should be out here, and it's just gonna pull guys out, and then we just hit it up underneath. So you got bug here. So our B is on this backside. Uh, and he's pretty much like a two by two off our tackle. So he's two by two off the strong, uh, the, the tight end. Typically, when we go bug, it tells him to go to the quick side, and he's two by two off that. And it gives us just another blocker on the edge here. And then these guys, you can see the, you can see these guys are still trying to figure out how to line up to it. They're scrambling. We're already in our cadence right there. And these guys are looking at each other, trying to figure it all out. Honestly, I probably had bubble here. This kid could catch. Um, that kid behind him actually was our quarterback last year. That number thirty-three was a dude. Like he—he was—he was. Like I said, he was. Uh, I was saying earlier how my number two this this two years ago was probably the second best guy in the county, uh, second best running back. That uh, that guy from Lee, uh, the the orange team was probably the best back in the county, the kid that just made that tackle. He's just tough, hard-nosed kid. Like, I, w I wish I could have 100 of those type kids, just tough, hard-nosed kid. But, again, the, the, the play's there. Like, you look at numbers-wise, it's there. We just got to execute. We'll watch it one more, then we'll jump to the next one. But again, that open field blocking was decent, but coming across the line, we just couldn't get down to that backer. All right, Q Jet. So we'll run red bus Q jet. So it's kind of a quads look again. It is a quads look just out of motion. So the across the line with our the line blocking is the same as belly. Our quick guard is pull rep. Uh, we're gonna. It looks just like belly. The the uh, the wing back comes across our B. Um, sometimes we'll make a read here. A lot of times I just let them clear out so we can lead block. Uh, the quick tackle, like I said, that's a freaking tough tough block for anybody to make, especially a ten year old kid. So again, we have our app check the edge on his way out. One, two, look at the edge. If there's no leakage, great, keep going. If there is, crush that edge. You get you get two guys there. A lot of times this end doesn't see it coming, and our app can put a pretty good pretty good whack on them. So again, we run motion and then we just get to the outside. Again, numbers game. Everything's a numbers game. Um, I didn't have film on this, but I did have it out of empty. So it's the same look out of empty, just our F uh, is lined up here. But again, it's the same thing. He's checking that edge. And then getting downfield. I think he actually does need to help out on the edge on this play. Might be the next play because I got a, I think I got two of these. So this is our, our F here. I think he does look inside. 
Uh, no, our tackle did a pretty decent job there getting to him. And our quarterback got to the edge. So you still show and film with Huddle. I keep pushing up and it brings me to my last slide, not rewind from Huddle. So again, you can watch our B as he comes around. He wants to make sure that, that that's sealed. And we actually hit them with belly a couple times off that jet. So if you look at this outside linebacker, he steps in because he sees this motion come across. And what we were doing is he'd motion across and our quarterback would just tuck it up and get upfield and run belly. So he's coming in and we can get around him at that point. Our B does a decent job stealing that, gets downfield. And again, we're off to the races on the edge there. We get a big block there by our, he's our, where is he? Oh, the kid thought, I thought it was a big block. <clears throat> but again, a good running, a good play right there. Uh, same thing, red empty bus, Q jet. This is one where he peels back because I think this kid's trying to crash in. This kid was tough. He was, he came hard and he just kind of steel blocked that. We got to that outside and we had good blocking on that edge and we're off. All right, like you said, we're kind of getting close to the end here. We've got counter. This might be the last one, I think. Let's see. So counter, we ran it a couple different ways. I couldn't find the game film of it and I'm not sure why. Actually, you know what? Let me find that. I'm gonna, I wanna show that. So out of the base look, remember how I said we did like the double handoff where the F gets it coming this way and our B comes this way and comes up field. Like I said, that's tough. So what we started doing to hit, to get that counter look is our F would come across and he'd make that ride. He'd fake that handoff like he's running power, buck, or Trojan, which would get flow coming to the right. And then he'd take that slide step and then he'd come back downhill. And again, I don't have good film with us. We didn't run this very well. Um, but he starts to come downhill. On this play, we got our wine or guard uh, pulling. Um, I don't have this out of our base look. This we've got it out of brown. So we've run out of we've run it two different ways. One with our Y and our B pulling, and then one with our B and our A pulling. Um personally, I like it with our B and our A pulling. It's tough for the Y to get out of a three-point stance and come across. Um, and then the other look, so here we'll go through this one first. Like I said, not a great play. The quarterback makes a pretty good play out of it. But he's not patient enough. That's the biggest issue with this play is our quarterback wasn't patient enough, <clears throat> and there's not a ride on this. He's like blocked. So if you look, he, the quarterback beat our pullers. Our pullers are barely there, and he's already in front of them. We get a decent out block by our guard. It might have been our tackle. Our, yeah, our guard and our tackle did decent. Again, our backside was kind of weak this year. And he gained a couple of yards on it where, on a play that really wasn't that great. Um, th this was our seventh, eighth grade group that ran the poll with the Q and or the B and the A, and the F comes across with a fake, and I like this look a lot better. It's a, it's still not a great, not blocked well, but it's like I said, it's definitely it's smoother. You can see how much smoother this is going to look than the last one. He's got that ride, gives it that time, and just that ride is enough to <clears throat> hold the quarterback in place for the or for the the two running backs to get out ahead of them. All right, so that's what I got there. I want to find uh, a clip of of our uh, counter. It goes to our B, but like I said, it's definitely worth showing. And tonight I haven't shown it at all, actually. Oop, actually, that's not what I want. There. Are you guys still able to see my screen? Like my huddle account? Got a specific play I'm looking for. Why is so we're in empty here. So we're in red, act empty. Remember how I, I think in the last one where I was trying to isolate my my F back over here. So we got him and empty. And what we're running them is, is a freedom motion. So deep motion behind him to the right. 
and we want it to look like our quarterback and our F are running option. And then our B comes underneath it. Actually, this isn't the one I'm looking for. But I think it's still successful. So there's that. We get a pull kick. And again, we don't block it very well at all. But just watch the flow of everybody going that way with the motion. And then boom, backs this way. So on this this won the game for us in the uh first round of the playoffs last year. Motion right, everybody flies, boom, we hit it back the other way. Again, that blocks well, still a big play. No, nobody there. And this team right here that we that he just had that run against is uh that was the number one seed in the county. So like they were they were real a real real team to put, to play with. In that counter, they we just we ran that against them, and they're so aggressive that it's there almost every time. And they knew it was coming, and they just could not stop it. Like even that, they kind of stopped it there, and it's still a gain of eight. Yeah, we don't want to watch that one. That one's lucky. So again, we there's. A ton of different ways you can run these plays. Um, blue empty. I wonder. If, actually, I wonder if blue empty is the one. Killer stiff arm. He was a tough running kid. But that's kind of what I got with running the quarterback. There's again. There's 101 different ways you can do it. I can draw them all up on X's and O's. Um, but I, I tried to stick with things that I had actual game film from. I could sit here and draw out plays for hours and just be creative. And really, it 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 takes longer for me to to create them on Huddle than it is for me to install them for a lot of these a lot of these plays. Because again, it's for nine out of the eleven guys most of the time it's the same play they've been running since day one. Buck is buck, power is power. Trojan's Trojan for nine out of eleven guys most of the time. Um, so again, it's very simple. And if out of my three talks, there's anything you can take away from my three talks is run your quarterback and make sure you use uh, formations, formations, formations. Because again, at the youth level, you're going to just out formation teams and they're super easy to install. The kids pick up, pick up on it and they, they enjoy it. Um, something I actually did for the championship game is we call we put in what we call scramble. And the kids absolutely loved it, which so pretty much what it was is I call red scramble F power. So when I call that, the the only thing that they had to worry about was that they were lined up in F power by the time the ball was snapped. So the quarterback would come out and everybody like so my my uh my F, my B, and my A could line up almost wherever they wanted. Um, be creative. I let them kind of go wherever they wanted, which they thought was super cool. And then my quarterback would come to the line. He'd uh, take a half a second. He'd look around. He'd say down. And then everybody would run to where they needed to be. And, like, so if it was red, they'd just run to the base formation red. And then we'd run the play. So, again, it, it just messes with the defense because there's not a formation. I let the players get into whatever look they want. They'd be stacked sometimes. They'd be shoulder to shoulder sometimes. And it would just kind of mess with the defense because, again, it's a look they haven't seen. So now it's pre-snap. They're scrambling, trying to figure it out. Quarterback yells down, and then they're moving. We get kids to jump off sides constantly. Oh, and something that I haven't brought up, which has been, our, I think, probably our biggest play all year, is we went on uh, two every single play this year. We didn't go on one a single time. We didn't go on three at all. We went on two every single play, and I bet – Every game we had at least five offside penalties on, on, on the defense, at least. So super easy. And, again, I like changing up the count. But going on two, you're changing up the count, and you're teaching your kids the same thing. They don't need to think about it, but the defense does. And, like, there was times, and it was actually in this game, where the defense would jump offside, and the kids would yell at each other. Like, literally, you hear them on the field, it's on two. You know it's on two. Next play, they jump. And again, it's just these kids. They in practice, I guarantee you, coaches just saying down, set, go. Then they run whatever they're doing. Down, set, go. They're running whatever they do. Then it comes into a game. They hear down, set, go. In in their mind, they've been so conditioned to just go on that as opposed to watching the ball. Like I said, we got a handful of penalties against the defense 
every single game, some pretty crucial ones as well. So that's kind of my speech. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for the last, geez, three and a half hours. Um, again, I love talking football. So here's my number. Let me actually pull up my contact sheet again. Um, there it is. Make sure you got my phone number. Follow me on my socials. Uh, email me. Like I said, I'll be honest with you, if you call me, I'm probably not going to pick up if I don't know the number. But if you text me, I'll gladly answer um, or email me either way. If you want any of these presentations, let me know. I'll get them out to you. I know I got one guy that's already reached out. So like I said, I'll definitely get these all out to you guys um, in the next day or so. And uh, like I said, that, that's what I've got. Are there any questions before before we go? doesn't look like it so we're going to wrap this up and again there's my contact information reach out anytime like i said I'll, i love talking ball so feel free to reach out and like i said have a good rest of your night guys appreciate you for sticking around for a nice three hours with me